So today, did anybody manage to read the research paper that we, we sent out? Did you manage to read the research paper? Anybody went through it? I think nobody has gone through the research paper. Okay. So, <clears throat> If you manage to read it at least, I mean, just, you know, just, you know, glance by it or something of that sort. Okay. Yeah, so today we'll, uh, we'll do analysis of variance. Okay. Chagrati Madam is somewhere in something, somewhere very nice place. We can't hear you, Jagruti ma'am. Yeah. You're on yeah. mute. Yeah. One of my close friends, senior doctor nephrologist, he has got a lifetime achievement award. He has got kept his party. He is a doctor Arun Shah, nephrologist in Mumbai. Yeah. Okay. So he has got a lifetime achievement award from Avatar Foundation. Oh, so wonderful. he has kept the party. <laughs> Okay. This is nice. really Still wonderful. the party, so I said, let me just let me just check. Still the people are coming. I'm the first one, you know, with him and me and my husband. Four of us are here only. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So, so we are asking for your lifetime achievement award. When is that coming? Oh my gosh! Oh my <laughs> gosh! <laughs> my lifetime. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we will pray. Till, till way ahead, I will learn from you. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm going to just share my screen. Okay, and just before I share my screen, I'll just give you a background. Okay, so the last time when you did your class, you had done something in terms of comparing the means across two uh, variables. Okay, so you found the difference between the two means and you found whether the two means are equal or not. Okay. Now, what we are going to do is something called analysis of variance, right? So, there is a one-way analysis of variance and there is a two-way analysis of variance. So, today we will start with one-way analysis of variance, okay? Now, let us compare, okay? And I think this is going to sound really familiar to you, okay? Now, you give a course of treatment to three uh, you know uh, a particular let's say you uh, you decide three courses or three types of medicines okay uh, to a person who let's say who is uh, you know suffering from um, maybe cancer okay so there is three protocols that you have devised now you want to know whether the person is in terms of some vital parameter is better off or worse off across the three treatments, right? So you really want to compare that across the three drug protocols, is there any difference in terms of what are the effects of the three drug treatments, okay? Now, by this particular uh, example that I'm giving, here you will have, you know, in terms of a variable, the dependent variable is something which is called which is going to be something like a, a ratio variable okay where it is it is like a continuous variable whereas the drug treatment is something like a categorical treatment because you are saying this this category first category second category third category right so you can have it across you know this this kind of ANOVA can be used across many situations so for example let's say you had a you know weight loss uh, treatment okay so maybe one person you only you know did some exercises the other person you only did you know uh, maybe in terms of food restrictions and the third person you both did a combination of you know, weight loss uh, exercises plus some uh, you know um, food restrictions okay 
and you basically want to compare the BMI across the three treatments. So we have three categories of weight loss treatments. But what is a dependent variable? It is BMI, which is a continuous variable. Because if it is not a continuous variable, you cannot find out the means, right? So only in a cat in in a in a sort of a in a continuous variable you can calculate means. Okay, so you really want to see whether the means are similar across the three courses of treatment. Okay, so in an analysis of variance, that is precisely what you do is try and compare the means across three courses of treatment and you can use this in varieties of settings okay so you can do it across you know uh, let's say places of treatment okay as long as you have categories in terms of your independent variable and in terms of dependent variable you have some continuous variable which can be subjected to a mean okay so that is how it 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 works okay Okay, so I am sharing the, uh, can everybody see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so basically, uh, as I said, ANOVA, it stands for analysis of variance. It is a statistical method which is used to compare the means of two or more group of conditions. Right? It allows researchers to determine if there are two signif any significant difference in group means by analyzing the variance of the data. Okay. Now here what happens in ANOVA, the data is sort of combined into two sources of variation. Okay, One is the variation that is there between three groups. Let's say you have three groups. Okay, One is the variation across the three groups and one is the variation within the groups. Right? So within let's say treatment A, okay, now you may have some 10-15 you know, observations of that. Now you want to see whether there is variability within the A group. Again, similarly, you will see the variability within B group. And similarly, you will see the variation within C group. And then you also want to see whether the variation between there is A, between A and B, A and C, B and C also. Okay. So the idea is to see that if the variation between the groups is more than the variation within the groups, okay, then you can say that there is a significant difference between the three categories of treatment or you know categories or whatever you may have you know or category or differences between the groups okay so what basically ANOVA does it is it is the ratio of between the group variation to the within the group variation it is obviously compared to a critical value right based on whatever degrees of freedom that are there okay and then on the basis of that, then you can say whether the difference is significant or not significant. Okay. Now, you can, uh, you know, you can use ANOVA across so many, you know, the, the applications of ANOVA are huge, right? So you can use it across experimental research, biology, business, farming, medical, anything, right? Because if you want to compare across different situations, treatments, groups, okay, so basically you want to compare, okay, what is the effect of different factors. So when you say groups, we normally call it factors, okay, on the outcome variable, which, which I said has to be a continuous variable so that you can, you know, draw out a mean, okay. And of course, there are two types of different types of anomas, one way anoma, okay. There is two-way ANOVA, there is repeated measures ANOVA, right? right? So, we'll go step by step. As long as we understand one type of ANOVA, then it's easier to understand other types of ANOVA, okay? Now, <clears throat> how can you use analysis of variance, okay? So, for example, if you want to compare means across multiple independent groups, okay? You want to, for example, you want to compare the average test scores of students, in different schools or the performance of different groups in a medical study right or if you want to compare a categorically independent variable like a treatment rule or levels of factors so for example you can even do it in terms of intensity of a dose right intensity one intensity two intensity three okay so you can even do that you can do it across treatment groups you can do it at levels of factors right then <clears throat> 
similarly when you're when we discuss experimental design it is also used in you know in uh, experimental design where different groups of participants so right now we may in a single this thing we may be looking at only one factor sometimes you may have multiple factors which means let's say you have three courses of treatment but you have also three courses of three types of groups also so this is a three by three study right so it's a nine factorial design kind of a study okay so you can even do that where you have different groups of participants who are exposed to different conditions and you want to see whether you know the treatment effect varies across the groups or not okay and you can also see whether there is an interaction right so if i am seeing whether you know whether a group and a treatment right if it's there is there is some sort of a you know uh, you know uh, interaction between whether uh, if i vary the group and if i vary the treatment right whether the interaction is good is significant or not okay so that is also uh, is there okay so that interaction impact is also there okay now next come is how is uh, analysis of variance calculated okay so as i said you know when i in a one way analysis of variance okay there is a tactical explanatory variable that means you will have categories right so you have a b c right treatment 1 treatment 2 treatment 3 group 1 group 2 group 3 factor 1 factor 2 factor 3 okay and the response variable has to be quantitative because without that you will not be able to calculate the means okay so basically what you are trying to see is whether the group means the means between the different groups are significant or not okay now even if there is let's say you have three or four groups even if one mean is significant okay difference is significant it will give you a positive result okay after that of course you will have to figure out which means are significant between which groups are significant difference is significant or which groups are not so that comes later but what df test will tell that even if there is one difference between the different group is significant it will give you a positive it will give you a, a significant f okay now sorry okay now one the first thing is called called variability of group means around the grand mean it provides a signal of a group difference okay now that is called uh, sum of squares between groups ssb or sometimes we have this on mean square between but it can be also called sum of square some books call it ssb okay okay now here notation ssb okay sum of squares between now degrees of freedom between now degrees of freedom is basically uh, it depends on the number of groups that you have okay k is the number of groups okay so typically if you have four groups okay so the degrees of freedom for groups will be four minus one that is three okay so if you have four categories of groups okay your degrees of freedom is likely to be three four minus k minus one it will be your degrees of freedom okay x bar is your grand mean that is for each of all the variables that you will take okay you take calculate suppose you have 10 variables okay and let's say let's say okay let me just take this as 12 variables okay and each there are three uh, groups okay so four for in each group okay so you will calculate the average of all the 12 variables that is called your group mean similarly because each group has four right so you will calculate the mean of let's say there is group a there is group b and there is group c okay so group a will be x bar group a then group b is x bar you know group b c group then x bar group c so there will be three groups three means of groups okay okay so when you say between groups okay now how to calculate sum of squares between groups and we'll show it to you right? please don't worry so you will have the grand mean which is x bar okay this is the group mean okay then for example a bar group a bar group b right so you will calculate all of this 
as I said, degrees of freedom is number of groups minus one and square between groups is basically this divided by this, you will get MSB. Okay. Now, for example, let's say I had, uh, I had three groups. Okay. And because I had three groups, so that means there were total of 15 observations. Okay. Now, the the overall average was 82.444. That means for all, if I took all the 15 variables, the average was 82.44. So you can see that in all the cases, the average is 82.44. Okay. The average of group one was 73.43. That means group one had five observations. So those five of average of those five observations was 73.43. The average of group B of those five observations that were lying in group B was 71.325 and the average of group C which also had five observations was 82.52. So in each cases multiplied did the square multiplied it by the total number of observations okay so you got the total sum of squares between the variation between between the groups Degrees of freedom because I had three groups, three minus one is equal to two. So my mean square between groups was 1193.843. See, mind you, I am only showing the calculation. None of you will ever need to do the calculation. There is all formulas and stuff. You don't have to do the calculation. I am just sort of giving you a illustration that look, this is how you are going to do it. I will, of course, show it on Excel. Okay and then we will do this okay now if i want to do within groups okay now within a group within b group within c group now how do i do it okay now this is random noise okay now this is mean square within okay now here it is notated by sum of squares within groups then there is degrees of freedom within sample size all groups combined and then you have individual sample size of group one okay individual size of group two right and you will have the individual standard deviation of within groups so within the groups the notation is always i which shows this okay so let's let's see how it is done okay sorry okay okay so here again it is the sum of squares would be it is summation of n1 minus 1 multiplied by s2 okay and this is the degree which is n minus k okay so let's just look at how this is done okay now i had 15 variables okay minus 1 okay and here what i have done if i look at this okay if i look go back okay now this is the standard deviation okay so I am basically looking at the standard deviation between the groups. Okay. So this is what I have done. Okay. So this was the standard deviation of group one. This is the standard deviation of group two. This is the standard deviation of group three. So I have multiplied it respectively by that. Degrees of freedom was because I have 15 variables. Okay. That means uh, 15, 15, right? So that is... Uh, and minus three, right? So because it is, if I just go back, okay. okay. So degrees of freedom, okay. Now n is sample size, all groups combined, okay. Okay. So this is forty-five, okay. Fifteen, fifteen, fifteen minus three groups, okay. Forty-two, right? So my mean square within the groups is 84.793 okay and so this comes out so this is my variation okay right so i got mean square between 1193.843 84 so when i divide mean square between between groups divided by msw right my f value comes as 14.08 and then i would simply you know compare it with the critical value okay okay i would compare it with the critical value out here okay 
and there is an F table. Again, I don't have to do this. It, it will pretty much the, the, the software gives it to me. Right? So it basically looks at the critical value. Okay. So my critical by degrees of freedom is for one, it is two. And the second variable, it is 42. Now, the table does not have it, but nevertheless, it, it is giving me the critical critical value. And then I have to simply compare the critical value with the calculated value. And if my calculated value is more than the critical value, then I can say that there is significant difference between the groups. Okay. I'm going to stop here and I'm going to take a small example. Can everybody see this? Can everybody see this? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I'm just increasing the... Okay. So here I have... I have... These are these... 20 volunteers, okay? And they were given four types of, you know, volunteers, you know, progressive, they were compared, they were given four courses, right? And they were, basically, they were looking at their pain level, okay? When they were talking, given pecabazine, okay? Then there was, then there was hadazine, right? So, basically, we wanted to really compare is that what kind of drug was good in terms of controlling the pain levels, okay? So, <clears throat> basically i have to see that i really want to see whether you know there is a significant difference between you know any of these drug treatments okay and then of course i will see you know between you know whether which one is better than the other okay so each of you right so in excel i am not i am not gone through stata right since all of you have access to you know uh, excel okay so if you go to uh, excel okay and you click account sorry you click options sorry okay i'll go once again yes. you go to file and you click and you click on file and you will have something called options okay click on to options okay now there is something called add insert Okay, so you have to click on this analysis tool pack. Okay, it's a free uh, add-on that you get with Excel. Okay, so you don't have to pay for this, right? So you can add solver, okay, uh, right? So some of this thing and you can just add okay and it will, you know, uh, load onto your system, okay? Now, when you are loaded onto system, you I can wait for two minutes for you to guys to try it out. How many of you have Excel on your laptops? Any of you? Any uh, of can, you can, can it be done on Anova? Have you got lap? Have you got? Are you using? Are you all logged on on your laptops? Vindy, Vindy, can you yeah. hear me? Yeah. Uh, so uh, last class you have asked us to download Java. So, can it be done on Java? Can you repeat again, Sunil? In the last class, you have asked us to download Java. Yes, yes. No, no, not the, I'm asked, this one, ANOVA, I am doing it through Excel. Okay, okay. Okay, so because Excel, everybody has, okay. Maybe next time I'll do, I'll, I'll see what Jazz is also because I haven't, I haven't tried that. Okay, because I use data, so I'll try that. But let's try it on Excel first. So everybody has got Excel? Has everybody got Excel? Please wait, wait, wait for one. Okay, minute. so go to file. Go to file. And then go to app and then go down and go to options.
and there you will find something at insert. Have you managed to do it? No, wait till so. I'll share my screen again. <laughs> okay, go to file. Go to options, go to add ins, ins, okay, and click on the first one. And then just press OK, right? So invariably what you will find out here, once you click on this, okay, on the data bar, when you click on the data menu, you will find something called a data analysis out here. Has everybody got this? Can you uh, show once more? Okay, sure. Go to file. Yeah. First, first one in your file. In your, you have the menus out here. Go to file. Yeah. Go to options. Mm. Okay. And options may you will have something called on the Excel options, you will have something called add insert. Yeah. Add ins. Okay. Yeah. And then add ins, you will, when you click on the add ins, you will get analysis tool pack. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then just click OK. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when you click yeah. on OK, okay, when everybody clicks on OK, okay. Then on your data bar, okay, and you run it, okay, you will have something called a data analysis. Okay, and when you click on this data analysis, it will give you some set of tools. Everybody's got this? Not sure. How many of you have got it? I reached up to data, but I couldn't see data. Sunil, I can't hear you. Uh, so I reached up to data, but I couldn't see the heading called data analysis. Maybe you can just, you may, you may have to, you know, uh, you know, log out and log in and, you know, you know, maybe restart your computer again. Okay. That's, that's probably, that's the only thing that that's required. So we'll wait for two minutes. Let, let's everybody try it. So the idea is to get the concept first.
Everybody's got it? Okay, so I am assuming that most of you have got it. Okay. Okay. So here I have, right, once I have this data analysis, okay. Then when I click on this data analysis, the first one that I get is an ANOVA single factor. Okay. Now let's see what I have out here. I have volunteers and I have these four lines of these headache medications. And you have noticed that in this, right, for each, uh, for each of the drink, I have 20 volunteers. So basically, my wallet, my categorical variable is the different different headache medicines and the dependent variable is the pain you know the how much is the pain level of each volunteer okay now <clears throat> so when i press on data analysis okay i'm going to just do it this again i'm going to just copy it on another sheet Okay, so what I'll do is when I go to analyze data, go to data analysis, I will click on ANOVA single factor, okay, okay. And then I will look at my entire input range with the, with, with the variables, okay. I will make sure that I will click my entire variables, okay. And because my data is given by columns, I will do it by columns, right? This this difference is across columns, okay? And I have my labels in the first row, so I'm going to click my labels in the first row. The degree of signal phrase I'm using is alpha, okay? And here I can either put it in a new sheet, okay? Or I can just click out here in the output range and I put can display it in the same sheet, okay? And when I click OK, now look what happens. Okay. Now the first table that it will give me, it will give me the count of the number of observations for each of the headache medicines. It will give me the total sum. Okay. So if I calculate the sum, okay. If I calculate the sum, So, okay. so you can see in terms of the sum 166.2 for the first one, 101.4 for the second one that is Hedazine, Paramlone is 89.3 and Ibuprofen is 81.5. That will always also give me the average. This is a sum. If I want to do the average also, it will also give me the average, right? So if I do the average, okay and i do this okay okay so you can see that the average also it gives me the average okay it will also give me the variance Okay, so if I use a formula out here, insert function, and let's say, uh, So you can see that it will also give me the it will also give me the variance. So it is roughly the same. 
Yeah, it's it's the same. Okay. Can you see that it is giving me the variance also and the and the average also? Right, the same. So it's given me a summary of all the three groups that I have in terms of the count, the sum of the average and the variance. Okay. Now then what it has given is it has given me the source of variation between the groups, total sum of squares and the degrees of freedoms. Okay. Then the mean square between groups is 74.54167. Within groups is 264 point and the degrees of freedom is 76. Mind you, <clears throat> we had 20 variables, 20 across each. So there's 80. Okay, each of them has 80. We have count is 80 and because I have 4, so 80 minus 4 is 76. Okay, and my F value is coming as 21.43. Okay, if I convert this into a number, okay, my critical value for this degrees of freedom is 2.72. This is way more than this. So I can definitely say that there is difference between the pain, you know, in terms of the ability to reduce pain between the four types of medicine, right? So that is what ANOVA does, okay? So this is one way ANOVA because I am only looking at one factor, okay? Now, obviously you will ask me is, I mean, that's okay, fine. I have done this, but I also want to know whether there is a significant difference between cabazine and hedazine, cabazine and paramoline, cabazine and iburan. So in this case, then what I will need to do is a t-test. Okay. So in a t-test, I will go to again data, go to data analysis, and I am going to do something like two sample assuming equal variances. Okay. I am going to click this, okay. Then first I will, right, and now because I have four groups, I have, you know, multiple groups, okay. So first I will do between cabazine, cabazine, I am going to take along with the header, sorry. And then I am going to take Right. I have taken the labels. Okay. And let's say my output range, I have taken my alpha is 0 0.05 and output range. Let's say I have done it. Now, what you can see from here, I'm going to convert this into number. Okay. Now you can see that you can see the mean between the two. You can see the variance. You can see the number of observations. You can see the pooled variance. Okay. Okay. Degrees of freedom is 38. Now that the T statistic that I'm getting is 8.32. Okay, and here in this case, okay, in a critical one value is 1.686 and two tail is 2.02. .02. So in both the cases, I am seeing that there is a significant difference. I can definitely say that there is a difference between cabazine and headache. The difference between the two is significant. Okay, similarly, I can do this for all my possible variables, right? So again, I can do now the next because I have four factors, okay. Again, I am going to take this time cabazine. I 
I'm going to take cabazine and then I am going to take this time I am going to take paramolarine. Okay, and labels is there, and my output range is let's say. Okay, so here again I can see whether it is significant or not. Right, so again it is coming as significant. Okay, so the difference between the critical value is more than that, but you can see the difference is not is again it is it is significant out here. Okay, so you can definitely say the difference is significant between cabazine and parmaline. Okay. Similarly, I can do it for whichever combinations that are there, right? So I have how many combinations I am going to have? One, two, three, one, two, uh, this will be uh, three, two, five, and six. I'll have six combinations, right? So six combinations, I can actually t-test across all the different combinations that I have, okay? So I'm going to stop share and I'm going to ask you guys if you have any questions first. Where do you think you want to use this? Does anybody have any ideas where do you want to use it? Comparing any medications? Sunil, your voice is not clear. Comparing any medications. Okay, medications. Where else? Uh, comparing any symptoms. Okay, symptoms, yes. That's very good. Anybody else? Comparing scores, okay. What else? Okay. I'll go back to the presentation. Okay. Okay. So I'm just doing a summary of this. Okay. So much of this is irrelevant because you always get, uh, you don't, nobody has to use the F tables nowadays. You simply have to, you know, uh, all you need to do is some statistical software, right? So here, what, what happens in a hypothesis, right? How do you write your uh, null hypothesis basically says that your average of one group is equal to the average of the second group is equal to the average of third group versus at least one of the averages differ okay so that is what your uh, for this particular okay okay now if you look at this it says at least one population mean differs but does not delineate which differs okay therefore you have to do a post calculation okay so the way we did a t-test okay you have to uh, basically do some sort of a you know after the rejection of you know if your null hypothesis is rejected then you have to do the comparisons okay so one of them is called a lsd comparison or you do a bonferrini uh, correction okay we won't discuss that right now because uh, that's a little complicated but as long as you understand this part it's it's good okay so if i want to look at basically what we are doing okay 
DF statistic is calculated by dividing the MSB by the MSW. The F statistic is a ratio of the variation between the groups to the variation within the groups. A high F statistic indicates that there is significant difference between the means of the group. A low F statistic indicates that there are no significant difference between the means of the group. The P value is used the significance of the F, stat of the F statistic. The P value is the probability of obtaining a F statistic as extreme as the one observed. Okay, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. So, if your P value is less than 0 0.05, then it means that you can reject the null hypothesis. Okay, a low P value indicates that the null hypothesis is likely to be false, and high P value indicates that the null hypothesis is likely to be true. Okay, so we are just trying to look at types of ANOVA, okay. Now, in the one that we have done, okay, we have basically compared the means of three or more groups, okay. For example, a study compares the effectiveness of three pain management interventions, opioid medication, non-opioid medication, and non-pharmacological intervention in palliative care. Pain reductions are measured before and after the intervention for 100 patients. The one-way ANOVA is used to determine if there are significant difference in pain reduction among the three groups. The F statistics and the P value obtained from the analysis help assess the significance of the differences. Right? Then you can, of course, you know, do post hoc tests to determine which are the specific groups that differ significantly in terms of pain reduction. Okay? Now you have something called a two-way ANOVA, okay? wherein you add another factor. Okay? So, for example, in this case, right, you are looking at the effects of pain management division, opioid versus non-opioid, and you are also looking at across male and female. Okay, so you are trying to see whether that there is a difference across number one, opioid versus non-opioid. Then you are looking at difference whether whether there is difference between male and female in terms of overall between pain opioid between you know and then you are looking at the fact whether there is an interaction between the gender and the pain reduction okay and there on that basis you can compare whether number one there is a difference between opioid versus non-opioid whether there is a difference between pain intervention statistics between male and female and the third is whether an interaction between you know, male and the kind of treatment has a significant difference. So, there is inter, if there is an interaction, then it sort of, you know, gives you an indication that yes, uh, whether you give an opioid versus non opioid on a, on a male patient versus a female patient, the there will be a slight variation. Okay. They will be depending again on what, what happens. Okay. So, I uh, will again share my screen okay i have done another example where i have given two interventions i have given another but this is i i didn't get a medical example i had to do a yield impact example okay so i am going to just delete this okay So here we were looking at crop yield, okay. We were looking at crop yield, okay. And there was, we were looking at crop yield across fertilizer 1, fertilizer 2 and fertilizer 3, okay. So there were three types of fertilizer and this is the measure of the crop yield, okay. Along with that, Okay, there is also something called density, right? What is the density of cultivation? Okay, so were you having a dense, highly dense cultivation or slightly less? So there were two levels of density that you were at. So we had to arrange the data accordingly, right? So there are two factors, okay? Total of 32 observations, okay, 32 into 3 total of 96 observations okay now density one you had three levels of fertilizer density two you had three levels of fertilizers fertilizer one fertilizer two and fertilizer three 
can everybody see this fertilizer yeah. one two and three okay and density one and density two so what do we have we have one factor which is the type of fertilizer and the second factor that we have is the density of the crop of the crop cultivation that we are doing has everybody got this this is how the data needs to be arranged okay you can do it for let's say if you are doing something like a bp medicine or a bp management okay so you put three drugs treatments okay and then you do it across male and female right so male and female will come on the first column and then you will have bp measurements okay so you have to divide this you have to arrange your data according to this particular method otherwise it will not work okay and similarly you can analyze you can use the same table okay you can use the same data and go to data analysis now this time you will go to ANOVA two factor with replication. Okay, because earlier we used single factor. Now we are saying two factor with replication. Now why I say replication because the number the number of rows are similar, right? So if I have sixteen rows, if I have this is how many sixteen, okay, and this is also sixteen. Okay, so because across the factors, my number of rows is the same. Okay, so therefore I can say this is replication. Okay, here also what I will do, I will ensure that I am going to select my entire table along with whatever variables that I have, okay, then rows per sample, mind you that I said 16, so this is 16, okay, because I had 16 and 16, okay, so rows because I had two factors, so 16 and 16, okay, and let's say I want to have, I want to do the analysis out here. Okay. Right. Now this is what 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 comes to me. Okay. So the first thing the person does is across factor one, that is the density. Okay. And it is comparing. Okay. It's giving me a summary that okay, I had 16 variables, 16 observations here, 16 observations. The sum was this much. The average was this. And the variance was this for the first density. Similarly, it is doing it for the second one. Okay. Now, this is where then it gives me the total 32, 32, 32, gives me the sum, gives me the average and the variance. Okay. Now, let me see what happens in this. Right now, how many samples are there? Right, I have the first sample is in terms of the two density of population. Okay, I had two, so therefore my degrees of freedom is one. Okay, so the difference between sum of squares. Okay, and I can see whether there is a difference between overall yield between that is the density in terms of the density of plantation. Okay, whether there is a difference, I can see that my F value is 15. Okay, and my critical values is my P value is less than 0 0.5. So it definitely says that across the plant density, okay, between the two groups, there is a difference. So plant density is definitely a factor. Okay, the second thing is between the columns that is in terms of the fertilizer okay now i had three types of fertilizer so three groups 
3 minus 1, that is my degrees of freedom is 2. Okay. Here also, I can see my critical value is 3.09. Okay. And my F value is 9.00. So, it is also telling me is that, that there is a difference between the three fertilizers. The yield actually differs across the three types of fertilizers. It doesn't tell me which, okay, that I will do a post hoc this thing, but it tells me that yes, there is a difference across the three types of fertilizer. Then the third comes is interaction is whether there is an interaction between factor one, that is the density or the crop density plantation and the fertilizer. So when I look at this, right, this is not coming as significant, right? You can see the p-value is not significant. So it does not really say that there is an interaction between the two variables. That means that if I am using something like a density and my, you know, and my fertilizer, whether there is an interaction between the two variables, that is not affect, it is not affecting each other. Okay, so that is, is not coming as significant. Okay, so this is what is called a two-way ANOVA, okay. I know it's a little technical today. Everybody is very silent. Everybody is very silent, right? Yes, ma'am. I too was guessing the same. <laughs> Nevertheless, at least you've got the concept, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. I think uh, um, when I heard of ANOVA, I thought it is some software. But now I understand that it is analysis of variance. And uh, it can be analyzed in X. So at least we could understand that. Yeah. So that paper that you I sent last time, okay, for your bed, Actually, that paper uses analysis of variance, right? So, if now when you try and consume that paper, okay, you will be able to correlate what we did today in the class with, with what that paper said. Mm. Okay. Okay, but as I said, this is one factor, right? And there's one way ANOVA and there is two way ANOVA, okay? So next time we'll try and explore it a little bit and then we'll also try and start, uh, we can try and do simple regression now. Okay. Okay. So today we'll end a little early because obviously this was a little, little technical. <laughs> yeah. If you have any questions then, you know, I'm happy to take them. Uh, Vindi, would it be possible for you to send a note on how to enter the ANOVA with Excel, just steps only? Okay, fine. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll do that. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Nobody wants to say anything. No, nobody liked the class, I think, today. <laughs> Everybody is very silent. I mean, Saturdays are becomes very you know, <laughs> difficult, right? Okay. Uh, hello, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the class. Uh, it went over my head, to be very frank. Okay. So again, I'll listen to the same class. I think that we will get the Google login, the Google link. So definitely, I will again go through it and I will try to understand. <laughs> okay, but, I just but anyway, <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Okay, I just want you to imagine. Okay, 
Yes, ma'am. Let's let's just just to couple of situations, okay? Mm -hmm. When you compare the situation, you want to sort of test it, okay? Now let's say okay, you want to compare rainfall, average yes. rainfall received, yeah, across three regions, okay? Okay, ma'am. Let's say you had one rain one region which is very uh, you know. A, approximately in the same district but let's say okay. one region was very dry okay right. one had modest tree cover and one yes, had very good tree cover okay and okay, you wanted to let's say compare whether the rainfall received was you know was different across the three regions okay so you basically wanted to come your your hypothesis was that tree cover increased the amount, average amount of rainfall received. That is, if, okay. you, if you plant trees, you are more likely to have more rain. Okay, right. Okay. So, yes. analysis of variance basically helps you to understand whether if there is the difference between the rainfalls received across the three regions was Perfect. different okay it was significant right. the difference was significant you could possibly say that the forest cover is an important factor in Correct. the region receiving rainfall Correct. okay now let's look yes. at another situation in in a in a let's say a hospital mm -hmm. okay and this is especially in terms of drug trials okay yes ma'am so let's say uh you have given some drug treatment for uh, for controlling blood pressure okay or right. sugar okay let's okay. say you have given three types of medication so you had right. different types of drug medication for controlling your diabetes okay or you okay. would measure diabetes what by h1 ab yes hb even six Okay, right? Yes. So let's yes. say you give some patients an A medicine, some mm -hmm. patients B medicine, and okay. some patients C medicine. Okay. And you ask them to take this medication for two months. Mm -hmm. okay? And before they started their medication, for all of them, you computed their H1, uh, H1AB, whatever level. HbA1c. Yeah, H1A, B, A, 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 B, C, or I'm not a medical. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So you compare that, and let's say after two months, again these guys come, and again you measure yes. it. Okay. Right. Then you would compare the difference between the beginning and the ending value of these. Ending value. Correct. Right. And then you would plot it across the three medications that you have. Yes. Okay. And for yes. let's say you had recruited. 60 patients on this so 20 patients you recruited for a medicine for 20 study. patients you recruited right. for b and 20 patients and in each cases you measured the difference mm -hmm. okay now you yes. by looking at analysis of variance okay see yes. you know between the patients let's say in group you know you give let's say medicine group a okay medicine yes. a now in these 20 20 patients there are likely to be some variation correct Right, because patient, to patient there is some, some sort of variation that is going to happen. Definitely Similarly, in, in, in patient in, in medicine B also within the 20 patients, again Definitely. there will be some variation. Then yes. similarly within medicine C, again those 20 patients, there is some likely to be some variation between the reduction in, in, in whatever the diabetes level. Okay. Now the objective is that if the difference between the groups, that means difference between A and B is more than the individual differences between a and between b and between c yes okay then it means that there is a difference between the medicine if there medicine is no also. difference within the groups compared to between the groups okay yes. then f is not going to be significant Correct. only if the Correct. difference between a group the, to B, to the variation C, any between other thing, yes. A group and B group and C group and C as group, compared yes. to the variation within A, within B and within C. Mm. Okay. 
So yes, that will that will definitely it will give the result. Yes. Yeah. So definitely. that is what analysis of variance is because when I say variance, it basically it means variability. So Correct, basically, you are comparing the variability between groups vis a vis the variation within groups. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now right. have you got it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now it's more simplified. Fine. I'll just go through your lecture once again. I'll get a clear idea, ma'am. A bit more. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank Anybody you. else? So, how many of you see, have seen Oppenheimer? Let, let's look at you know some variations in. <laughs> in Planning in, to uh, watch tomorrow, ma'am. Planning to okay. watch tomorrow. <laughs> so we can do variations in the reviews. Right. And then we can do the variation between Barbie and Oppenheimer. <laughs> the same group of participants. Okay. Some have yes. seen Oppenheimer and some have seen Barbie. Right? So yes. you want to compare okay, whether the, there is a variation between the reviews of Oppenheimer versus Barbie. Again, a case for Onova. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Got it. Got it. So I yes. go and see Oppenheimer and I go and see Barbie. So I give right. my review for Oppenheimer and I give my review for Barbie. For Barbie, yes. Okay, and then I will see whether there is a difference in the variations. Okay. Correct. I can do yes. some other third one or maybe some Bawal also, right? I can do that also. <laughs> okay. And I can see right. the variations in review. So I have seen all three movies and then I have yes. compared. Yes. Okay, so now it should be clear. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, okay. Okay, ma'am. Good night. Everybody. Oh, okay, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think uh, we can wind up for today. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, thank you, Dr. Sirish. Uh, like, uh, your interaction made <laughs> me also realize that Ritivam is a fan of movies. <laughs> 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 thank you, ma'am. I mean, and I, nothing I, works, I, movies I, work. <laughs> Baba I also watched, so I could relate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Somehow, somehow missing Pallium India again. I'm getting <laughs> this nostalgic feelings for Pallium. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And we'll meet in again in the next session. Till then, everyone, take care. Keep spreading happiness. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.